On today's Maker Mashup, we're making a star for the top of a holiday tree. Today we're going to be building a holiday tree topper and I've got it right here. Just a simple star and we've got some NeoPixels inside that light up. But I wanted to take this project a step further. I didn't just want a holiday star. I wanted something that you could interact with and have some fun with and kind of impress your friends and family with as well. So what I did is I went ahead and I created a remote control for it. Now it doesn't just change colors. That would have been very simple. It does change colors and you do have the ability to press the buttons on here and change the colors of uh, the star and you can go ahead and uh, it's got a play mode in here as well. So my granddaughter, who's uh, just three years old, she can press the buttons on here and get different colors out of the star. And it's got some sound feedback. I put a speaker in here as well and a little bit of fun. But for the adults, I wanted to do something that an adult could play and have a little bit of fun with. So what I did with this is I created a follow the leader game. And this is completely wireless. So you put the star on top of your tree, you go ahead and use this remote, and basically it's a follow the leader game where it blinks out a series of colors, and then you go ahead and try to repeat those on the remote itself. And the really cool thing is, is that when you are having the holidays with your family, it's one of those things that you can pull out. And not only is it fun for some of the younger kids, but it's also a great way to show off your maker skills this holiday season. So today we're going to be going over how to build all of this and I'll be making all these files available so you'll be able to download it. The electronics and the source code for the star you'll actually be able to customize yourself and I've got some plans for what I want to do with the same project next year to add some additional capability. I wasn't able to really get it done this particular season but next year I'm going to take this up another notch and produce a, a part two next year that will have some more features. So with all that said, let's get to work. We start this project by taking the 3D print of half a star and you're gonna to wanna to print two of them. Then after that, we're gonna get some three by six magnets and you'll insert those into the 3D print and that will hold the star together later on in the project when it's on your tree. For this project, I chose an Arduino Nano and I soldered some header pins so that way I can solder it to this project board and plug some wires into the top as well, making this project pretty easy to manage overall. If I need to program something, I can just plug a USB cable in there and modify this project. So I tried to add a little flexibility in the design and make it easy to assemble. Since we're hooking the NeoPixels up here, my daughter was able to help me out because of the ease and simplicity of this project. So she's right now putting in the screw terminals and what we're going to do here is we're going to solder these to the board and then we'll join everything up afterwards. So once we have these screw terminals in place, I'm also going to put the resistor and the capacitor for the NeoPixels on this board as well. This has the advantage is that the entire board has everything that we need and then we'll plug the remote into those headers on the top and that will allow us to add wireless capabilities without having to solder everything on the project board. I tried to also line everything up so it was a straight line shot to the connections on the board itself. There's very few wires for this project. I only need to move around some power wires, but otherwise you're going to just solder in the terminals directly to the same pins as they're facing on the Arduino itself. And I'll include a schematic down in the description if you want to build this yourself. Since we're going to be playing games with this, I got a speaker and desoldered and resoldered on some longer leads. I have links in the description for these inexpensive speakers that I got for this project and they hook directly to the Arduino Nano. I added some ferrule connectors to the end of the NeoPixels and then installing them is pretty easy. I peeled the protective backing from the NeoPixels and then I just stuck them to the inside of the star as closely as I could uh, to make sure that they bent easy without breaking any of the NeoPixels. Now some things you may want to consider here are the distance between the NeoPixels. These are some pretty tight fitting ones, which means that I had to use a 10 amp adapter for 
the NeoPixels. Now that 10 amp power supply had plenty of power to drive all of these different NeoPixels. So depending on what kind you put in there really drives what sort of power you're going to need for your NeoPixels. Once you're done with putting them in there, then you're just going to use some flush cutters to cut the rest of the NeoPixels or the excess ones. And one thing you're going to want to do is count how many you have because we're going to need that number when we do the software programming. Mounting the project board was pretty easy. We just went with the hot glue solution. What I did here is I just applied some hot glue, put the board in here, and then squeezed in a little bit of extra glue. It does take a little bit to dry, so make sure you hold that project board until everything is all cured up. The speaker has to go in here as well, a little more hot glue, and then make sure the hot glue is only touching the magnet on the speaker when you install this. The ribbon cable you see here is just connecting the wireless receiver. And the reason why I went with the ribbon cable here is it makes things a little bit easier to work with. I didn't have to solder it to the board and if I need to remove it to get it out of the way, I can do that. So you can see here the power cables are unhooked and they're really easy to hook back up afterwards. The only thing that's left is to take the NeoPixels and plug the ferrule connectors into the screw terminal and then we're just going to tighten them up and we should be ready to apply some power. Since I already uploaded the sketch for this, as soon as we apply the power, our NeoPixels should work. There we go. Just check out the description and you'll find in there links to the sketch as well as schematics for this entire project below. Okay, so if you've made it this far in the video, what you should have now is this star and you should have a functioning one and yours should be like mine where it's magnetic. And at this point, you're able to go ahead and put the back on here and put this up on your tree. Now, I had no problem whatsoever using it magnetically on my tree and I had it there for uh, a couple of weeks before I shot the final portions of this video because I wanted to make sure that it worked okay. Now the nice thing about this is that it is magnetic, so if you want to change the software in it, you just pop off the magnet, uh, the cover, and then you can go ahead and burn a new version of your firmware on there and put it back up on your tree. Or if you're going to do that in the off season, you could go ahead and do that as well. So it's a really easy way to go and get in and out of it without having to screw it together. Now, if you've got an area where, let's say you've got cats or other animals that might you know, bump into your tree or, or even climb up it, um, you may want to go ahead and finish this off with just a white zip tie on the bottom. That would help keep it together. But like I said, I had this up for two weeks on the tree and I had no problems with it whatsoever. So now that we have the star built, let's talk about how we're going to build this remote. And this remote piece of this is really the fun part. There's some really cool electronics inside. And then once we go ahead and get this all running, it will communicate with the star and you'll be able to start having some fun and playing some games. For the remote buttons on this, I chose to use some lighted arcade buttons. And these are pretty universal in size, so you can pick whichever ones you like. I got a set of multicolored ones that reminded me of some Christmas lights on a tree, and I thought that would be great for this project. I started by wiring up all of the ground wires for the LEDs, and I did this on all of the different buttons. Then I went ahead and used color-coded wire that matched each one of the buttons. So that way I knew which ones were the ground wires and which ones would be the signal wires that I would need to hook to our electronics. Last step was to go ahead and solder on the positive wires or all the red wires to each one of the buttons for the LEDs. This way it was really clear to me which ones were going to be used for which function inside the enclosure. Now when we put these buttons inside the enclosure, it's a pretty tight space, so this color coding was extremely helpful in making sure we were wiring up everything correctly. Once all our buttons are in place, our next step will be to solder the leads together so we can make this functional. Now that we have everything assembled, we're going to take one ground lead from every LED and then we're also going to take one wire from every button and tie all of them together and then these will be hooked to ground. I chose to solder all of these together and then cover them up with some heat shrink. 
Now, because there were so many wires here, I felt it would have made soldering this onto the project board a little unwieldy. So if you had a different suggestion on a better way to handle this, I would love to hear it down in the comments. I didn't want to go the wire nut route because I thought that might come apart. Next, I repeated the same process here for the red LED wires, and all of these will power the LEDs themselves. While we have five lighted buttons, currently only four of them are used in this project. So what I did is I took those four leads that we are going to use, and I crimped them with JST connectors and inserted them into a four port JST. Now this will have the advantage in that it's easy to plug this into the circuit board and I don't have to solder it, but we could have soldered it directly to the board. To me, this makes it so that way I can also expand it later because I have plans later on to use a Arduino Nano in here as well and add further functionality for that fifth button when I work on this in the off season this year. All of the LED power wires and all of the ground wires then went into another JST connector to make it easy to connect to the electronics board. Since the LEDs light up all the time, I needed to have a switch in place to be able to turn everything on and off. So I'm powering this with a 9 volt battery and then what I did is I used one of the ground leads for the 9 volt battery and I'm wiring that to the switch and then both of these will be wired to the electronics board. The switch is installed with some M3 screws from the outside. These small micro switches just barely will take an M3 screw with a little bit of force and I think what it actually does is tap out the small metal hole that it has but this holds it very securely with an M3 screw. The electronics for the remote are pretty simple. We start by taking our four pin JST mail and we're gonna solder that onto the project board here. Now we're gonna align the four switch pins of the wireless transmitter up to the same four pins of the JST connector. So that means that we'll have the power connectors just offset a little bit to the right of the rest of the pins. This makes soldering this piece very simple. These four channel wireless receivers and transmitters are super simple. They work just like switches. I really recommend them if you want to add a quick wireless capability to any electronics project and they only cost under $10 for most of them. So it's a great way to add that functionality at a really low cost and not having to need a lot of electronics experience in order to make your project wireless. Now that we have the transmitter wired in, what we're going to do is bridge the connections to our JST here with some solder and this will be fully wired in for the transmitter. All that we're going to have to do then is run some power and plug in the JST and everything will work here. So the rest of this was just hooking up power, but I had to offer two power options here. While the transmitter itself would use the nine volts because it was a three to 40 volt transmitter, the problem I had is that the LEDs were only five volts. So what I did here is I wired in a couple of JST connectors, and then I also used a five volt buck converter to make sure that the LEDs were only using five volts. And essentially all I did was put those on here and then I wired them up so that way the power was running from the nine volt battery to both the buck converter for the LEDs and then the power directly to the transmitter itself. I know that's a lot to take in, but I've also included a schematic for this in the description as well. The final assembly is rather easy. All you have to do here is plug the JST connectors in and then we'll mount our project board inside with a little hot glue like we did the star. Now, the advantage of using these JST connectors is that I plan next year to expand this to add an Arduino so that way the remote itself will have more functionality. I'll even be able to control the lights if I want to. By using the JST connectors, I can simply unplug the wires themselves and plug them into the other board, making this something that I don't have to rewire next year. 
Once we have the back cover on, then we'll just flick the switch and give it a quick test. Now you may notice that red light is not working. Not my fault. It was a problem with the red light. I actually had to scavenge one from a blue LED and replace it, which you'll see later in the video. Okay, we've got the star up on our tree and I've programmed into the code many different modes. There's about seven all together. Uh, one of them just keeps rotating colors. I've got another one that cycles different rainbows. And there's a kid play mode and even a mode where you can use it with RGB and move the numbers up and down so you can control all the different colors on here. So there's a lot of different modes and there's a lot of capability here. You really could do a lot of different things with this. And it's really flexible at this point, especially since we've attached a remote to it. And what I've done is I made it so if you press all four buttons at the same time, it switches those modes. So once it's up there, it's completely wireless. All right, so let's check out the follow the leader mode. It even gets faster the more you play the game. All right, so as you saw, we had both the remote control and the star working, and we've got all those different functions. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna put the models up first and some of the initial source code. I'm still working on the source code, so the Thingiverse files that I am posting, uh, they'll have a, a link to the repository where you can download more uh, updated firmware. Now, the other thing that I'm planning on doing next year is while the star unit piece here, while this one has an Arduino uh, type board in it, I'm gonna put one in here. Now, the reason why is, as we talked about in the video, I didn't hook up the white. The white port part on here is just the light and it's lit up, but really just the color buttons because we only use that four channel uh, wireless. Now, of course you could get a five channel, but for me, four channels seemed like enough because with some efficiency, like we talked about earlier, if you press all of these buttons down at the same time, then it triggers that to move on to the next one. Well, or to the next mode. So what I'm gonna be doing is putting an Arduino in this and then using that to drive the button controls. So when you press, let's say the white button, it's gonna send that signal of four across, but you'll only have to press one button. Now I wanted to get that done, but I built this with expansion in mind. So the JST connectors that we have in here, all that we're gonna to have to do is unplug the connector and then just basically put the Arduino in the middle and it will be able to send all the commands, uh, basically interfacing all the buttons uh, and then send variations to the command. So if I wanted to send a pulse of, let's say, uh, a sequence of two or three different things, it really gives me a lot of expansion and I can do a lot of things with it. I think this is a really cool project because it really took everything a little bit further and made it so that way you can show off your maker skills and have a really cool tree topper. And if you're really creative, you don't have to stop at a star. You could change this to be just about any shape that you wanted to. Uh, it'd be really cool if somebody did an angel version of this project just to see an angel up there and changing different colors might be uh, kind of a cool twist. But uh, you could also equally put a gigantic Death Star up there and add some colors to it. I went with the traditional star, but really it's all up to you on how you do this. There are plans out there on uh, Thingiverse and other sites where you could put like a Death Star together and, and create the lights in it yourself and use this the same project for that. So I definitely encourage you to check it out. And if you need help with this or any other project, I invite you to check out our channel Discord. In that Discord, we have almost a thousand different makers all doing different things. And really it's a great place to share ideas and get help on a lot of different projects. Uh, I'm just so thankful for everybody that's been a part of that. It's really great that you're able to go in there and uh, just everybody so helpful helping each other get past little problems in their projects or just share some really cool stuff. And uh, it's a really great place to hang out. So 
If you're into that sort of thing, I definitely invite you to check it out. And uh, with that is going to bring the end of today's video. If you liked it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe. I would really like to hear from you of what you thought of this project, but what other games can we make with this? Follow the leaders just scratching the surface on the functionality, but it'd be really cool to hear what you could build with this, uh, some other games and make it more interactive. So if you have those ideas, I'd love to hear it down in the description. Uh, go into those comments and just leave me some feedback on what your ideas are. So if you'd like to help support the channel, I invite you to check out our Patreon page. All of that helps uh, us work on these cool projects and all of the other projects that we do. It's a great way to help support us so we're making more quality content for viewers like you. So thank you all for your uh, help this year in 2020. We really made this a great year and I'm, I'm just so pleased with how this year wrapped up of all the different projects that we did. Uh, so I feel like this was a really great project to kind of end the year out with. And uh, I hope you enjoy it too. Down in the description are all the links for the different parts that I used for this. So you should be able to put your own together. So that's going to wrap everything up. And with all that said, we are going to see you next time. And we'll see you in 2021.